it's the Alabama. Another race with great history and prestige. A mile and a quarter on the main track. Monomoy Girl, the, 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 the really outstanding division leaders waiting for the riches at Parks. And Wonder Gadot, the Canadian bred superstar filly. She'll be running against the boys in the Travers. We don't know if that's going to turn out to be a good decision or not. But still, we have an interesting Alabama led by Midnight the Sioux, the daughter of Midnight Loot, now in the Steve Asmussen barn. Big winner of the Mother Goose since she joined the barn. But last time she was clearly second behind Monomoy Girl in the coaching club American Oaks. That's for sure, Brian. I think uh, I think the storyline in the Alabama is uh, is two pronged. It's the it's the fact that the division leaders aren't there. You mentioned Monomoy Girl, Wonder Gadot, Red Ruby uh, came up with a minor injury and and is out of training for now. So uh, a lot of horses in the field who have been running behind those division leaders get a little bit of class relief in here which um, uh, their owners and trainers are probably happy about. Maybe the racing fans, not as happy. But And then there's the fact that it's a 10 furlong race and, and, and the horses in here don't have experience going that distance. So when you're handicapping, we certainly have to think about uh, who's going to be running strongest at the end of the race. And, and I guess at the top of the list, has to be midnight midnight pursue um i i think uh out of the field for me there's not much question that she could probably handle the 10 furlongs um and without monomoy girl to chase or wonder Gadot in there she's gonna be a deserving favorite in the race absolutely matt she'll be a clear favorite midnight pursue uh, look, she's won four graded stakes in, in really impressive fashion this year in six tries. The other two, she ran into Monomoy Girl. So Midnight Pursue on paper looks like the, uh, the horse to beat by a, by, a, by a clear margin in here, Matt. She's, she's had a terrific year. Having said that, I don't like her at a mile and a quarter. I don't think a mile and a quarter is her cup of tea, the daughter of Midnight Loot. I think she's better rallying at shorter distances Seven furlongs a mile, maybe up to nine furlongs, but at a mile and a quarter over this Saratoga track. Now, now, just on class, she could end up winning this, but I don't think a mile and a quarter is what she really wants. And I'll tell you what, the second choice, I don't know how low the, these two are going to be. Maybe Mi Midnight Pursue is six to five and Talk Boop to me is only five to two. I'm hoping for a little bit better, but Talk Boop to me, and, and this, is, this kind of... Uh, emphasizes how strong this division is because you mentioned Monomoy Girl, Wonder Gadot, and Red Ruby not being here. But Talk Boop to me is for real, folks. Talk Boop to me is very good for Trainer Rodolph Brissett. Uh, she, uh, she won the Indiana Oaks of all things last time, but uh, really big performance there at the first time around two turns. She's a granddaughter of Medagliadoro out of the Young Sire Violence. Uh, talk move to me looked really good getting that second turn and I think she'll uh, be ahead of Midnight Pursue early and, and, and if I'm right Midnight Pursue doesn't really want 10 furlongs Midnight Pursue will never get by talk move to me in here uh, talk move to me showed some class uh, early on when she won her maiden by 11 lengths went right into tough tough horses Mia Mischief at Churchill Downs one of the fastest Philly sprinters in the country she ran second there, a good second there. And then second to Monomoy Girl, where she really wasn't giving up much down the stretch. So it's all talk move to me in here, Matt, uh, as, a, uh, as a clear second choice, but my clear pick to upset the, uh, the favorite. Yeah, we could certainly say that uh, talk move to me is the horse in here that is, on the, is improving um, and, and has room to improve further. Um, talk verve, verve to me, uh, like you said, Brian, has never finished worse than second in her career, which is uh, only six races. Um, looks like the race sets up well for, uh, for this horse. Um, and there are some others in the field that we should also mention. There's uh, She's a Julie who uh, won the Iowa Oaks for Steve Asmussen. Um, uh, uh, also a lightly raced horse who has room to improve and Asmussen's horses have been running really well. Also in the field is Coach Rocks, another horse that 
that that flashed some talent earlier in the year, breaking uh, breaking her maiden at Gulfstream and then winning the Gulfstream Oaks, and then she started to run into the big hitters in the three year old division. She ran second to Red Ruby the last two times, and I'm sure. Uh, Trainer Dale Romans is welcoming a little bit of class relief in here, but I don't know if she's as good as uh, as the top two in there. Yeah, I don't know if it's any class relief uh, either, Matt, when you're talking Midnight Pursuit and Talk Loop to me. Yeah, she's a jewel. It's very interesting. I mean, actually, uh, Steve Asmussen, uh, she wasn't as good earlier in the year, but uh, she's really turned it around. She had some nice races at Churchill Downs, some tough battles in a couple of allowance races at Churchill Downs, which are better than they look on paper. Then she went out to Iowa and she, she, she won pretty much for fun in the Iowa Oaks there. Big jump in class for She's a Julie, but uh, her last three races tell me that she's very improved. And if I'm right about her stable mate, not really wanting a mile and a quarter and, uh, and, and saying at the top of the stretch that, uh, no, I'm not going to be able to touch Talk Louvre uh, in this one, She's a Julie. The uh, the lesser Asmussen entry could be the one that uh, picks up the pieces for second. Uh, Coach Rocks uh, really no match the last two. I, I imagine she'll run her race, but I don't know if it's good enough to get in the top two. Red Ruby really was mutter, much better than her recently. Eskimo Kisses, uh, you know, she was second in the Ashland. She's got a good closing kick, fourth in the Kentucky Oaks. She got a prep race. It wasn't a great prep race last time in the coaching club of American Oaks, but she certainly could pick up some pieces at a mile and a quarter. So I think she makes some sense to uh, use underneath in the exotics as well. But Matt, I'm all about talking move this week. Yeah, Brian. Um, and, and that's hard to argue with. And if, if in fact you're right, that uh, Midnight Basu doesn't like the distance, uh, a, a talk verb, she's a Julie exacta, um, could pay nicely with, uh, with a heavy favorite running out. 